So in the last video, we have seen that strings are immutable, which means once you assign the value to a string variable and if you try to change it, it will not replace the old object. It will create a new object for you. I don't want to do that. What I want is I want a string variable where the value of the variable should change. It should update. I mean, it should not create a new object. It will create it will it should update the old value. In that case, what you can do is you can make your string mutable and how to do that is by using a class called a string buffer. So string buffer is a class which provides you string mutability. In fact, we don't have one. We don't we have two classes. We have string buffer and string builder. Again, we'll see the difference of both. I mean both are same. Both are used for string mutability with one difference that we'll see later. So time me, let's focus on string buffer. So let me create an object of string buffer here. And we'll say this is sbf equal to new string buffer. Okay, that's our object. Now, once we created the object of string buffer, let's assign the value. So again, you can assign the value later, or you can assign the value here itself. Let's say this my, my value is Naveen. Now I want to I want to assign a different value. I want to assign, let's say, uh, Naveen Reddy. In that case, I have to append, right? So I will say sbf. Let's try to do that. Let's try to do that. Let's say this is Naveen ready. Will that work? And you can see there is an error. Uh, it says mismatch converting from string to string buffer. What you can do is you can use some methods here using which you can append. So when you already have Naveen there, you can also append it, right? So you can say this is Naveen space ready. So now if I try to print the value of it, so we'll say SBF. Now SBF is an object, right? To fetch the value, we can say two string. Again, it's not compulsory anyway, because if you don't mention two string, it will be calling two string. And if you run this code, uh, that's here. And you can see we got the output Naveen ready. So this time it is not creating two objects, it's creating only one object. Okay, so the same object has Naveen, and then later on we are appending with ready. In fact, there are lots of methods we can use. We can say SBF dot uh, what else we can have? Uh, we have append, then we have, we also have, uh, it will fetch the character, character at, then we can delete the characters from a particular position, uh, then we can, okay, we can insert the character. So let's say if I want to insert a character in between, I can do that, uh, then replace. Now we can also replace the text. Example, if I want to replace uh, Naveen by, let's say, uh, any, any name with five characters, let's say Manoj. So what we can do is we can say replace from the position zero to position four. And I want to replace by Manoj, Manoj, it's Manoj, Manoj. And now if you see the output, you can see it's Manoj ready. Oh, we have replaced it with oh, five. And it should be at five, right? Okay. So we have replaced it with Manoj ready. So that's how it works. That's how we can we can replace the characters. In fact, we have lots of methods. You can explore more, more uh, methods from this. It's always a good thing to explore. We can also fetch the substring. If you, if you don't want the complete string, you want to print only five characters, you can do that by using substring. Uh, you can set the length, uh, not, not required. Uh, yeah, we can insert and we have lots of methods to use. We can also use delete. Let's say I don't want, uh, uh, I don't want this double D here. Okay, so we can, we can delete that. Uh, so what character it is? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. So 8 and it will end at 10. Is that way? And if I run this code, uh, yeah, so we can see we have removed the DD. So that's how that's how you that's how you use uh, that's how you use string buffer. Now, if you go to the string buffer class, let's see the definition of it. So, string buffer class is a class which provides string mutability, and if you see the definition of it, string buffer is a is a thread safe. It, it is thread safe. What it means is. String buffers are thread safe to use by multiple threads. So let's say if, you are, if your application is working with multiple threads. So in that case, you don't want one thread should affect, I mean one thread 
operation should affect the other thread operation. So what we can do is we can make your, uh, if your string buffer is thread safe, that means you will not be having problem with multiple threads. If one thread is accessing the string buffer, other thread will have to wait. And we have, we have talked about that, right? Uh, thread safe when we have talked about uh, synchronization. If you make a method synchronized, only one thread can access it. And that's what string buffer is all about. It is thread safe. So we have one more class, right, which is string builder. Now string, build, string builder will have all the same methods. The, the thing which we have done here, string builder will also have the same methods. The difference is if you go to string builder and if you use the def definition of it, it's a mutable character, ca a sequence of characters, but it is not thread safe. So you can see it says, but with no guarantee of synchronization. So string builder doesn't provide you synchronization. That's the main difference. So if you know, if you know that you don't have multiple threads in your application, you can of course go for a string, string builder. And if you have multiple threads, it's always safe to go for a string buffer. So given a choice, always go for a string buffer. Okay, you, you never know, right? But at what time you will, you will move to thread. So always go for a string buffer. String builder is something which is there, if you want to use it, you can use, but string buffer is something we should always use. So that's how you achieve string mutability using string buffer and string builder.